Hello everyone, back with you. One of the things that I uh, like to do in finishing up uh, projects like my these custom induction systems to give them a nice uh, finished and professional look is uh, make uh, custom gaskets for them. On uh, this project, I actually invested a little time and made some fixtures because I'll get to reuse these fixtures on many, many other um, projects and uh, you'll probably see why here in a minute. But uh, I uh, just make these fixtures out of uh, medium density uh, uh, fiberboard and um, use my CNC router to cut them out. Uh, I could just hang a laser on my CNC, but the problem is, is the decent gasket materials that I like to use don't laze very well. And if you try, uh, particularly the thicker gaskets, they stink to high heaven um, when you do it, but you can cut them pretty good um, on a CNC router um, with a carbide bit. And uh, this stuff is, for example, um, I like this uh, Felpro uh, Caropack, uh, um, gasket uh, material. I, I can buy it by the 30-yard uh, roll and it's reasonably priced and uh, I just pull off what I need and put them in the fixture and make them as I need them. So uh, not a whole lot uh, to making them. Um, here's a, one of the fixtures that I made all the, the carb gaskets with. You can see it's just a particle board uh, there. I do put these little uh, threaded inserts uh, into them in the back. Um, from the back side, they hold the screw real nice, and if I ever yak up the fixture, I can just pull them out of there. They drive with a with a hex drive um, in there, so uh, they aren't that expensive to begin with, but I can reuse them, and you can see I've got little indexing dials that I locate it with on my, my table there, but uh, I load up, if they're 32nd of an inch, I can load up up to 8 um, and cut 8 aside, so I can cut 16 in, in about a uh, one and a half minute cycle. Um, on the uh, or being a two minute cycle on the CNC router, it takes me longer to load them and unload them than it does to cut them. And uh, you see there that I've got a couple different sizes um, for the inserts for the large and small bore carb. Um, these I use a lot of um, on that. The, the original ones for inline carbs were just big rectangles with holes in them and they hung out all over the place. And I just thought they looked like hell, but uh, you know, these. Fit um, and conform to the uh, uh, um, carburetor flange um, nicely, which I'll show you here in a second. But uh, so I made myself a whole bunch uh, there while I was at it for the carburetor flange, and then uh, you can see the fixtures there in the background. And then, of course, uh, this is one here for the uh, um, carburetor, uh, the plenum, the carburetor adapter um, on the plenum, and uh, the uh, also, the intake flanges, there's a left and a right side. I made a couple of them for myself for those, but uh, one and one spare. And then uh, same, uh, there's a left side and a right side that are slightly different than one another. So I've got a right and left side template, but uh, that fixture back there, I'll be able to use for all uh, 351C um, and Boss Series, uh, 335 Series Ford engines, just by making um, the new clamp um, for it that fits whatever profile of the custom flange and just use this because it just uses the same uh, bolt hole pattern. So I'll, I'll get to uh, recover that investment in time to make those fixtures uh, going forward on future projects because I, I do have uh, quite a few 335 series uh, intake manifolds uh, on the drawing board. So uh, making gaskets for them uh, in the future will be just a... Uh, you know, really just what time it takes me to load it on the CNC router table. But uh, you can see they, they cut pretty nice. They're nice and crisp, you know. And uh, uh, let's have a look here on the next uh, uh, excerpt here and see uh, how I did on fit and what they look like uh, on the intake manifold. Stay tuned. All right, back with you, everyone. Let's have a look and see how I did here on the fit up. I'll just uh, try uh, one gasket here on the intake manifold. You can see that uh, lines up pretty nice. Well, it should because <laughs> I had the CNC program from making the intake, so it was pretty pretty easy to get the silhouette off of that. But that uh, that fits the uh, perimeter of the intake, uh, the lower um, adapter in the intake, pretty nicely. Let's uh, see how the other ones line up. Here's the uh, intake on the adapter. Let's have a look at the uh, plenum gasket. Looks like it ought to fit. 
Yeah, you know it's gonna fit. Alright, I got those studs in there. They were Loctited and double nutted to, to seat them on that. And then uh, here's the uh, bottom lid. Yeah. Looks like it fits on there pretty nice, except I think I like it uh, this way better with the Ford emblem pointing forward. So we'll do it that way. And I guess the uh, only thing left is. Uh, yeah, the carburetor gas, it's pretty nice with the studs because, uh, you know, you can just drop them right on there and they're ready to go then after you drop them on there. And then I slide the carburetor on the top, but uh, I'll put the nuts and bolts on here first and we'll get her back together and maybe get one more look at it. I've got uh, another thing to bring into the discussion. We'll put the carburetor on it and the air filter on it and then there's few more things that uh, I'll discuss in the next clip. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, I'm back with you here and I think that uh, we've got this one finished up. Um, I think I'll just uh, take a couple of minutes here to show you the finishing touches that I put on uh, to make this a turnkey system. So uh, first thing let's have a look at is the air filter assembly. Now, um, if you look at my channel, there's a couple of videos on me making air filters. Um, this one happens to be a drop base air filter for an inline carb. And uh, I used to make low profile ones, but can and discontinued the uh, low profile elements on me. So I made this drop filter base here, which uses a two inch element. And there's also a two and a half inch element in the same size. But uh, it's about as low as you want to go above the boosters and to kind of aid with that, you see these four conical depressions here. Um, I actually put some turning vanes in there that sit right above the booster, those conical turning vanes and uh, a couple of air, uh, air filters where I've made that are lower profile where that seems to, to help quite a bit. So uh, anyway, it's cast aluminum intake uh, uh, filter with a, a washable element, uh, kind of in the same theme as the rest of the intake, you know, it's it's cast, it's not um, billet. Um, I've got billet filters too, but I just like the looks of these for period correctness. But, uh, and they do, um, they have captive hardware too. So you set them on there and you just have to alternately tighten up those uh, screws, but it keeps the whole thing together as an air filter assembly. That way it makes them easy to take on and take off. And uh, so we'll set that back there. And of course I've got a restored and rebuilt uh, inline um, A-carb uh, sitting on there, um, DOZX 9510A. And uh, let's take a look at a couple of the other things. Um, I made this custom fuel log for it. Uh, you saw from the pictures and I'll, I'll try to supplement this discussion here since the video can't really see very much of the detail in the close-up. So I'll give you some close-up pictures here um, afterwards. But uh, I, uh, Inline carbs have uh, uh, an eighth inch port on each one of the uh, eighth inch NPT port on each one of the fuel wells. And uh, they're very convenient to plumb to. So I decided that uh, I'd make this little fuel log here. It's very compact. And of course it's casting as you'd seen, um, but it's got um, a dash eight port um, here and two dash six ports here. And when I say port, I mean, port fittings like uh, this one here and they seal with that o-ring and I really like the port fittings so much better than o-ring fittings you can put them in and you can put them finger tight and they seal whereas you don't have all that uh, thread sealer crap and I always thought that uh, uh, NPT fittings were like driving a splitting mall into a log just a lot of stress but uh, I cast up a few of these um, which is basically just a uh, you know, a Y fitting, but it's got a, it's got an ear on it. And uh, that ear is actually to tie it off to one of the mounting studs, because if I didn't do that and left the ear um, off of it, this whole assembly, as well as whatever you plumb to this uh, half inch AN fitting out here would be hanging on that aluminum eighth inch MPT fitting. And that, that just kind of gave me the willies. I didn't like that. So I tied it off, uh, uh, drilled a hole through it and tied it off to the front carb stud. Um, the only downside of that is, is that to get the fuel log off, you have to take the carburetor off first to get it off. But uh, 
I could slot it maybe so you didn't have to do that, you know, a slotted hole so it could slide off this way, but uh, I don't think it's worth weakening the part. Um, you know, how often do you take the fuel log off uh, your setup once you have it on there? So, you know, if the future owner of the system wants to do that, they can. And, uh, but anyway, I did this one all with uh, black um, Earl's fittings, you know, maybe a little bit more period correct might have been the blue, but uh, I kind of like the black and I did uh, the uh, um, black 12 point uh, bolts to mount it to the uh, intake adapter with uh, heavy washers um, on there. But uh, the fuel log then at least allows you to uh, get all the plumbing done and uh, it got a good generous half inch size line um, to plumb to it. And uh, I don't know, I'm not crazy about braided stainless steel. Um, I'd probably, if it was my own, I'd probably just assume have this be a uh, fabric or just a uh, elastomer fuel line with crimp fittings um, on it. And <laughs> I did manage to make this one without bleeding. I usually cut myself all up with the, uh, with the braided stainless lines on it, but you know, it's good. And uh um, I was um, considering making um, a hard line and then turning on the lathe a slip fit O-ring fitting that the, the tube would be able to slide in and out of. Because with these being uh, MPT fittings, you can't really control precisely where they land uh, distance wise. So, uh, but anyway, I put some effort, you know, into the fuel logs and I'll probably make those available um, to my inline carb customers. But uh, that's the, the fuel system on that. And then... A couple of the other things you can't see, but you might remember underneath here, the plenum on the front and back, there's ports, vacuum ports on the bottom side of the plenum. And I just stuck one of these plugs in it um, right for right now. But uh, the future owner, if they want um, to tap the plenum for vacuum, um, one of these positionable elbows, you know, would be a good way to do that. You can screw that in underneath back there and then just plumb to it with a half inch uh, AM flared fitting line on that, but they're they're pretty versatile on, to, on, on that. And you can see from the picture on this side, I got a little bracket and a spring here. Maybe I can show you a little bit better here for the video's sake, but you can see maybe right down in there, or I'll put the picture up, there's a small bracket here and a return spring for, actually it's a redundant return spring um, for, the, uh, for the accelerator linkage. And if I can horse this thing around, And there's the primary return spring and uh, the bracket um, for that. And the only thing um, that's uh, really left to be done uh, on the system uh, is uh, accelerator bracket. And since I don't know what it's actually going to go on, I'll just wait until I sell the system and whoever gets it can tell me what they've got and I'll make a accelerator uh, cable bracket for them. Uh, I do put these uh, little spring-loaded uh, ball detents on there. I like those because you can get them on and off quick. But uh, anyway, that's uh, that's that. You can see the uh, return spring there and the accelerator pumps working. And uh, I do put these gaskets on, on the carbs so it seals to the air cleaner nicely. But uh, outside of that, yeah, I would say this one's a wrap. Um, it's a pretty nice looking system. Um, I'll put some details on the overall height of it. The, the only thing I'll say is, is you know, <clears throat> the FE power intake adapter is, is a really nice piece, but in order to get it to interface nicely with uh, 351 Cleveland intakes, um, it does have to sit them up there um, a bit uh, higher. And of course, with the taller deck height of an FE, the underhood clearance that you're going to get is never going to be as low as that intake would be sitting on a 351 Cleveland 9.2 deck engine. But uh, you know, when we make these kinds of mods and theme cars, sometimes you have to make exceptions to, to do what you need to do. But uh, hopefully whoever the new owner of this one is will like it and will run it and uh, enjoy it. So uh, that's going to be it for this one. Glad you came along. Don't forget to go back if, you, if you're just joining in and uh, you're wondering where this intake manifold came from. There's a part one that describes the making of the intake manifold. Um, it's part one under, under the exact same name as this one, this one being part two. So go back and take a look at that. And uh, there's other links uh, in the description of that part one um, video to other things related to uh, casting and, 
in some of my projects. So until the next time, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the flip side. Take care.